Chen. Chen. Hi. If you want to, uh, Hoga would be presenting presenting oh, okay. today, so I don't know if you want to connect from the okay, room. Okay, I'm gonna go there. Uh, it's your choice. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm not sure if he's doing the present. Okay, see you. See you.
gonna work. Look at that! Okay, um, so our, the computer that runs the video conference system here is really slow, currently logging in. Um, I'm now here on my computer, but that means that, yeah. Give me another two or three minutes and I hope that that will work. So, small, this, okay, welcome to the Git introduction session. <laughs> It's uh, more or less a repeat of what I did half a half year ago, but um, it's always good to get a little bit of refreshers. Um, let me start out by reminding everyone what uh, a version control system is. A version control system, oh, let's start with what you need it for. If, if you write anything, um, might be code, but also if you write your thesis or a paper, um, particularly if, can we, may we close the door? Um, particularly if you, um, if you write it in LaTeX, um, then with several iterations of the software, <laughs> sorry about that, we just closed the door and locked someone out. Um, with several iterations of your of your paper, you get very quickly get into something, some into something like that. So you have a paper, and then you kind of put on different versions, and you tag every single version in a different folder. But then you don't know what is the correct one. Is the correct one is it this one, or is the latest one the final V two or the final or the submitted? Or do the, do the changes from Sarah in corporate also have the changes from Peter? Or is it the other way around? And this gets really, really confusing. And if it gets confusing, it gets worthless. And the version control system is there to keep track of all the changes that you make to your documents. And I'm, I'm um, saying deliberately documents because particularly if you use LaTeX, um, that works really, really well with, uh, with any version control system as well. Um, if you work something like Word or something, it's a little bit more tricky because version control systems usually uh, compare the, 
the text in the text and the word, a word document of course has far more information and might change more dramatically from one iteration to the next, but there are still ways. Okay, um, there, are different, there are different version control systems out there. Um, they were all designed with code in mind. Um, but I'm here to talk about Git and Git has certain advantages why I think that Git is a really, really good choice for scientists. Um, and the main, the main reason why Git is, I think, what the best um, version control system is that it's almost ridiculously easy to set up. Um, the other thing is that other than, for example, subversion, SVN, it does not need a centralized server and it does not need continuous access to the centralized server to be useful. You can just have a local repository on your computer without any, any server at all. And if you have a remote server, you can still, even if you're not connected, you can make your changes. If you're on the plane, if you're on, the, on the train, I don't have internet access, you can still make changes, submit um, snapshots, and then when you get back, you can upload all the, all the changes at once. So, um, Git is really, really easy. Um, it needs to know just a little bit about you before you can start working with it. Particularly, it needs your name and your email address because every submit, every submit that you make into, the, into any Git repository um, will be tagged with your name and email address. And to say, and to set this up, you use the command uh, git config minus minus global because you you want to have this for all all different git uh, its uh, repositories that you use you want always the same um, user dot use user dot name and then your name and the same user email right there. now what this does it creates in your home directory a hidden file called git config um, and writes these things in there so we have um, we have username so user name Holger user email this is the only thing you have to do before you can use Git. Um, and you only have to use it once for ev on every computer that you do. So if you have, access, if, if you have access to this file, um, you don't have to do this ever again. So let's say we want to create a new repository. Um, we, use, we again use the command git and then initialize a new com component in it. And then we give it, we give the name that we want to, that we want to have this. And what this does is it creates a, a directory called test repository inside my inside the directory that I'm currently in. So I can now go in into here. And of course it's empty because we have it's, it's a new repository. Um, but it has created a, a subdirectory called dot git and that's where all the local um, snapshots will reside. So don't worry about it. Just ignore that that, that it's there. Um, just know that it's that it's part of your part of the directory. So um, if we we can now inquire what the status of the Git repository is, we say Git status, 
and it will tell us that we are on the branch master. Use every of every um, um, repository ha has a master in Git. It's called master in the version. It's called trunk. That's basically the main branch, the the one where everything uh, that 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 you use all the time. It says there are no commits, and there is nothing to commit. So of course we had we haven't created anything yet. We have so far only created the, um, the Git repository. So let's create something. Let's create a shopping list. We want X milk. What's every flavor beans? Okay. Save, exit, and now. We have, of course, the file. If you now say git status, we see that we're still on branch master, still no commits, but it notices that there is an untracked file, shopping list.txt. And it also tells us what, it, what, it wants, what we might want to do with it. We can use the git add command to add the repository to, to add the file to the repository. So let's do this. And now, the next status is now we have um, still, still no commits, but now says, okay, there is a change to be committed, a new file shopping list.txt. And in order to, um, to now commit this to, repo to the repository, we say git commit. Now what git commit will do, it will automatically start an editor. Um, that depend you can set the default editor, um, depending on your, you can, put it, you can put it in your git configuration file. If, it doesn't, if it's not in the con in git configuration file, because it, mine, it isn't, um, it, will put, it will use your default, the, the, default editor that your shell supports, in which case, in my case, that's win. Now what it wants is it wants me to put a meaningful name for the repository. Um, some, sort of, of, some sort of brief description what, it's got, what, it, what it is. And if you read the text here, please commit message for your changes. Line starts, I ignored, and, and an empty message aborts the commit. So in, it actually, it really forces you to write something down because if you just exit again, the, the, the commit will not proceed. So let's put it in um, initial commit. Um, write, quit, and now it has um, committed it. So. Let's go back to git status, and it says, I'm still on Git Manager, nothing to, to commit, working tree is clean. So um, the file, of course, is still there, but it now it says this, everything in this, in this folder is the same as the current snapshot of the repository. So if, you, if we now look, good, look into the log of the repository, we can see that this has now created um, a snapshot. There is this commit ID, which is a really, really long um, hexadecimal number. It's supposed to be unique worldwide. Um, by with, and by this, everything is, is referenced. Now, now let's start. Let's make some changes. So let's say we also need to 
So now we have made a change. I've added follow paper to the stopping list. And now with git status, it will tell us, okay, there is, um, the shopping list has been modified. And it, again, it gives, it gives us hints. So at the moment, they are not staged for, for commit. Um, if I were to write com git commit now, it will not add anything. And that is um, one of the features of, of git is that it has the staging area. So basically, you accumulate first, put all the changes that you want to do, put into the staging area. Um, and then you commit all the changes that you've made to the, uh, to the repository. And it, again, Git tells you what to do. Git add um, to put it to stage it. Or you can even, if you use Git checkout minus minus and then the file, you can undo the changes that you've just made. If you made a chain, if you made a... You can also use Git diff to tell what is the change that you've just made. So you say, it says here, okay, this was always in there, but there's a new line, follow paper in here. So, Again, I've made, I've added a file to, to, the, to the staging area um, and, and I'm now committing it. So now I'm just giving it a reasonable name for what reasonable means. And um, and now again, it's, everything is clean. And if we look at the, at the log, you can see that there is a new, uh, a new commit on top of the original one. Yes? So every time you use it, add. Yes. Um, but I'm coming to that in a moment. Um, because that, as you said, um, you all, every time you have to add and then commit. So add and commit are su such closely followed things that there is actually um, a short form for that. So let's say um, we're, not, we're not in Harry Potter's universe, unfortunately. So if we just um, delete this file and say, well, actually, it's just jelly beans. So we have now, again, modified the shopping list. And if we go git diff, we can now see that the line 30 bolts every flavor beans has been removed and a new, uh, and a new jelly beans has been added. And now we're coming to this, um, can I, do I always have to put git add? No, you don't. If you say the second command, git commit, and give it the option minus A, what that does means it adds all the files that are already tracked not new files, but all the files that are already tracked, the shopping list is tracked, and then commits them. So I'm now making another thing, another commit. And we have a third commit here. I didn't undo anything here. But um, there's actually, let me quickly one, say one more thing about how to, how to commit something. And then we're going into, into a different one. Um, Tell me something else what I need to buy. 
apples. Very good. Good. So, hit commit minus i, we have already done this, but I can also say minus m and then give the reason immediately here as a text. Now you see that I've that I've now added um, the apples to the list. Just everything in one single line of code. Yes. Um, otherwise, if, if if I were to if if I were to just uh, do it like that, um, Git would in, the the bash would interpret every single single word as, as a new thing. So if it's more than a word, you have to use it. You have to use, um, you have to use uh, quotation marks. Uh, so, sorry, is that in, is, is that, so now sorry, does this that is, this is the main thing. So everything that I've told you so far is basically what you need to know to use Git. As long as you okay. push things into the repository, you do it because if you make a mistake, you can then go back, which you re it will be very rare that you need to do it. But when you do it, when you need to do it, the repository is your lifesaver. And this add and commit in it, add and commit um, is the most important part of this, therefore, that, that you have to put into your, your brain automatically. Once you need to get something out, which we're talking about now, um, that will be something that you can think about if you need it. And then you can just Google it or, or anything else. So, um, but that's, yeah, that's, that's the most important part so far. Is, are there any questions so far? You don't hear us, Olga. Okay, no questions here. Um, anyone else? <laughs> Olga, you yeah. don't hear us. You don't have the sound. No one is so quiet. Olga. Claire. Yes, you don't hear us. You have your sound. <laughs> Check something. I'm not muted. Let's mute this. Okay, can you hear me? Do you hear us now? No, still not. Can okay. you hear me now? There, can you say something? Yes, I'm, I'm ah. talking about you not here. Yeah, woo -hoo. Okay. okay. Uh, there was a question. Oh, there was a question earlier. Can you? Can the person who had a question ask again if he wants? Yes. Yeah, sorry. Um, Ian here. I just wanted to check the the minus m and the text there. Does that is that re does that replace the uh, text you put in with the editor? So is that another way of? Um, adding your text about your commit without putting it at the top of the editor. Yes. So if you, the, the, in, in the editor, you can actually make multiple lines of, of notes. Um, if I, um, uh, So um, I, you can actually whatever. I'm just making something up. Um, so you can actually put um, put multiple lines in there. But usually, I only put in a single line of line anyway. 
and that is where this minus m that is where this minus m is, is uh, gets um, basically it, it it means don't don't bother opening the editor this is the line of code that I want to edit to add. okay thank you thanks that's very helpful okay thank you good Okay, then, by, by the way, I'm now using a different microphone. Are you still, can you still clearly hear me? <laughs> can, you, can someone confirm that, I, that, I can, that you can hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, good. Yep. <laughs> so, um, so uh, we put we put a few things into the um, into the repository. Um, so let's see how we get. Um, let's let's see how we get things out of out of yeah. um, One, um, it's just a shorter version because I've now um, put too much there. So um, I said before that these commit IDs, they uniquely identify every uh, submit. Um, you don't usually have to use the whole thing. Um, often it's enough to just use the four, first four or six um, Letters. So, if you, for example, if you want to find out what what was the change again for this emergency edition, I just use these for these first six letters. I said, say git show. Can you find the windows bar? Okay. Um, okay, <laughs> I don't know how to write in Windows too well. So, okay, so um, I now say git show, and I use the first six um, digits of this emergency edition, and then we can see okay, the, the file shopping list was edited, and the line toilet paper was edited. Yeah, just the first four, I think four is. I think it has to be four. So that works. The one less does not work. Okay. Yeah. So you have to use at least four digits. So what if we want to find out what has um, uh, what has changed um, since we did all the changes that that say since this one add apples to the list. Um, for that we can use the git diff again. And just um okay. um, yeah, as it was the same as last. So if I use this. Now we say that that um, all the changes since since this particular snapshot uh, APDA, um, I've added the line apple apples and bread. Um, there is a special version um, that is head. So everywhere you can use this, you can use these um, these things. You can also use head. Head always refers to the most current one. That's the that's the um, 
but it, that, show, that means the, the most recent submit. And you can go back in time by adding um, these, are these called the heads? Certain types. Certain types. So one back was the apple. So head. Head was the bread. One before head was apples. One before that was the replacement of the beans. That's a, that's a nice shortcut. Um, we can also make it if uh, you can compare to the a version to the version two before that. So that is um, if we want if the changes from this there here to there um, would be the removal of all of the delegates because we're not going back in time. So what to do it the other way around? This is this one. Um, So what if we want to go back to the wizarding world? Now what, I'm, now, now what I want to do is I want to go back in time and actually check out a certain snapshot. And this is done by check the command checkout. And then again, I give this version because that was the last one where we were still in the wizarding world. And we now get a warning message. We are in a detached head state. That means that um, there are, um, we are no longer at the head of the repository. We can make new commits, but they don't go anywhere. Um, sorry. But if we look at the shopping list now, now the shopping list is exactly as it was when we um, when we had when when we wrote this version. And here's something that I can um, that I can that uh, you can do is now we have um, we are in a detached head state, but when, Let's say we want to branch out from here. So we want to create a new branch where the shopping list remains in the wizarding world of Harry Potter. That's done by the git branch command. The git branch command creates a new branch from the current snap, from the currently checked out snap, snapshot. So um, we're still at a, at a detached head state, but we have now created a new branch. So we see that we're currently at a detached head, but there are now two branches, master and wizard. And if we check out, and now we can, the new, bra the, the new branch, and you say now, we are on branch wizard. And of course, we still have the, the shopping list um, like the last one. So um, let's add some butterbeer to it. Really good. So if now look at 
the, uh, at the, at the commit list. You can see that we still have the initial commit, um, the additional color paper, and now a new commit called Butterbeer. Um, we can swap between the branches simply with the checkout command. But now go into, in, into the um, list. We have the initial commit, the emergent, the toilet paper, jelly beans, apples, and bread. But what I don't have is a button here because we are now on a different branch. So these things, these two uh, versions now um, walk parallel to each other. And um, I'm just you you get this um I'll 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 get a link link to this uh what I'm doing here. Um I create an alias. So now I can just use git lg. Um, I, I just create, I create a little um, alias for the logs that make, that make the output nicer. Um, you can see that it's a little bit easier to read. Um, I'll, I'll give you a link of how to do that at the end of the, at the, end of the talk. And you can, uh, I, can I, I can show you my proper config file that can, it, it, it just file. Um, so you can see that the, these commits are the same, but this one is not different. Now what we can now do is the master, of course, is, is, has several more additions than our wizard uh, branch. So what we may, might want to do now is to um, incorporate all the changes from the from the um, from the master branch. So while I am on the branch wizard, I'm now going to git merge master. And that tells it that I want to merge all the changes from the master into my local branch. I press enter, and I get um, it's tried to merge, but it gave me a merge conflict in this file. So it, was tr it, it tried to put them all together, but it failed. And I'm going to tell you, and, and let's have a look why that failed. Um, you can see that these things were done properly. It even properly replaced the Bertibot's ever favorite beans from my, uh, by jelly beans. But in the master branch, we've added apples and bread underneath toilet paper. And in the wizard world, we added butter beer underneath the toilet paper. And it didn't know which order these things would come together. So it tells me, I'm sorry, I don't know what to do. And this is a very common um, merge conflict uh, syntax, where it basically said, in head, there was a butterbeer here, and master, there was an apples and bread. So you have this distinction between with these lines of equal signs. 
between this and this. And what it does, what it wants us to do is to fix, to manually fix this file. So in this case, I'm just deleting all these things. It's a chopping list. I don't care for the order. But if I wanted to, I could, um, I could, uh, um, Put it uh, here, my, let's say. Okay. Now I'm saving this, and if I guess what other what other alias I have. Um, so now it says, okay, um, I am on branch with it. Un, I have unmerged path, so I can either abort the merge, or I can um, add this file that I've just fixed. That's what I want to do. And then use a commit. And now what you can see, and that is, that's why I like this uh, one of them. Another thing that's, that I like about this block was this, um, was this, L, was this uh, alias that I'm using quite often, is that you can actually follow the, it shows here um, which branch each snapshot was actually made on. And that is, um, and, and that way I can, uh, I can, fo I can follow it along. So these changes, this, this, and this was, was done on the, on, the, on the other branch, the master branch, whereas this change was made only on the wizard branch. Can you just remind me, like, how do you, how do you find out what the names of the branches, possible branches that you have? Uh, just if you use branch without any Options. Yep. And then it gives you a list of all branches and tells you which one is going to be active. Yep. So you can see that. It, yes. it. Okay, now the thing is, of course, what I said before, it has also merged the name, the change of Bertie Blood's ever, ever flavor beans into jelly beans. And that is something we do not want on our, on our wizard um, branch. So we can revert this particular branch and all already um, pre-fills, it automatically does a commit. So it undoes a specific change, it automatically um, pre-fills the commit message. So you can just save this. So now we have here this revert only models. And if I now look at the shopping list, we we again have the vertebrates ever flavor beans, but we still have the apples and the toilet paper and the bread that we got from the master branch. Um, now, the thing is, there's one more thing that you might want to do. Um, so if you want, you can use tags. Tags are something where you can basically give a specific snapshot a name. So if I want to, for example, um, uh, git tag, um, Uh, one. Um, then Um, 
I can I should be able then to get uh, check out one. And that that is basically the same. I can tag specific revisions with a name that's easier to remember than just this code line. Okay. Um, so if you want to, for example, if you want to, if you've submitted a specific revision of a paper to a, to a journal, you can tag this specific revision with a name. You don't have to create a new branch or anything. And that way, when you get the when you get the, the comments back from from referees, you can automatically check out this specific snapshot and compare the and compare the things the the the, the, the people have said towards this question. A tag is kind of like a branch, except that you not you do not expect to go anywhere anywhere from there. Okay, um, and I think that's that's a, about as much as I want to talk about this week. Um, unless we have something more pressing to do, we can talk next week about remote repositories and collaboration. But these are the basics of it. And if I want to come back, remember these three commands, git init, git add, and git commit. And once you've, done, that once you've memorized those, everything will be fine. Everything else if when you need it, you can just Google it. It is good and there good, um, easy to find uh, resources for how to use it. Are there any questions? So, using this practically, um, would you create a new big repository for? Uh, you said for a paper. You have one I would probably create one repository for paper because it's so cheap. So cheap. Once you have it, yes. it's there. Now, what about code? Code. I I have a Git repository where I took down the notes for this for this session. Every change that I made is in the repository. Um, rather err uh, on the side of um, of creating the repository. Oh, by the way, maybe I should have said this before. If you have already something. Um, let me, let me quickly. It's good that you talk. That you bring this up. Um, if you let's say you you already have something. So I have um, I have I, I already have file, a file here. It's basically just some trying out of, of specific things. Um, but there's it's not a. It's not because, of course, I have already a Git repository there. It's not a Git repository. <laughs> um, so I can just, I have already created some files here. I want to, I say, okay, I really should use, should use a Git repository. I can just say git in it. And then just the pop this the, the single point referring to the current directory, and that way I have created um, I have created a new git repository in here. Um, in here for the for this uh, for this uh, repository. So you don't you can just add a Git repository to a code that already exists. But of course, it will not have tracked anything that you did before that. So the earlier you, you add the, the Git repository, the better. Um, Should also remember that next week remind me to talk about the ignore file, which is which is something that I use quite often. Um, but that's also next week. Any other questions?
Um, this is this is my this is my actual git config file from my home directory. So you can see several aliases um, that you might have seen during the session where I just type st enter because I simply I'm lazy and I just write st. I don't I just want to I don't always want to write status. Um, the most interesting one is probably this one that I that I've added. Um, it's a little bit complicated, but um, I'll see if I can. Uh, it's it's on our it's it's on our GitHub repo of this talk. Um, I'll see if I can send it around uh, on, the, on the mailing list later on today. If you want to copy it. Um, any other questions? No, I think I'm very good in the time. Thanks for coming. I hope it was interesting. And um, hopefully see you next week. So our last session this year. So is it correct? Yes? Yeah, next, next week is our last session for the year. We'll start again in February. Uh, what I wanted to say also is uh, in these two sessions, we're presenting relatively the basics of Git. Uh, but if you have anything else you would like to learn about Git, just let us know because Git is a very powerful tool, can do a lot of things, but I'm sure a lot of things it can do are not useful to a lot of you. So uh, we don't want to present stuff you're not interested in. Uh, so. so Git was specifically created to work on the Linux kernel. So a really, really huge project with really, really lots of contributors. And funnily enough, the developers of the subversion uh, version control system use Git as their version control system. So um, it's it's really it, it you can it can get as, as complex as you want. But what I really really like about Git is that it's so easy to set up. You can, it's so easy to get into. It. And then when you need new things later on, you can just expand it on the fly and everything you've done before will still remain um, valid. Okay, um, thanks very much and see you next week. Thank you. Thank you.